All right, for months you have heard me call right here on this program the Mueller investigation a witch hunt. You've heard the president say it. You've heard me say it's the biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in modern American history. Tonight, we're going to break down the scandal item by item, step by step, based on three serious issues. The abusively biased partisan makeup of the political investigation, the focus of the investigation on a single man. We don't have equal justice under the law rather than an actual crime. And third, what is a rampant double standard present in our justice system today? All right, we get started. On May 17, 2017, Robert Mueller was tasked with investigating fears that the country of Russia interfered with our presidential election the year before. Now, given this was a hotly contested subject, well, you'd think it would obviously a be a politically charged issue. You would expect Robert Mueller probably to be careful to appoint a team of nonpartisan investigators that didn't have any conflicts of interest. Sadly, the exact opposite happened. His first lead investigator, the now fired Peter Strzok, the same guy that said that Hillary Clinton should win this election 100 million to zero. By the way, the same guy that said, oh, all sorts of things about Donald Trump and talked about an insurance policy just in case he did win. Now, his lead prosecutor, meeting Mueller's Andrew Weissman, the guy the New York Times calls Mueller's pit bull, actually attended Hillary Clinton's election night party. Well, he's objective. Weissman also praised acting Attorney General Sally Yates when she refused to follow orders from her boss, the President of the United States. Mueller also appointed a woman. Her name is Jeannie Ray. She previously served as an attorney for Hillary Clinton. That's right, at the Clinton Foundation. Now, this looks really, really bad, and it's only the tip of the iceberg, because Mueller literally filled his team of so-called objective investigators with major Democratic donors, no Republicans, people who donated tens of thousands of dollars to the Clintons, the Obamas, and others. Fourteen of the 17 special counsel prosecutors registered Democrats, zero Republicans. And at this point, Robert Mueller might as well have hired Maxine Waters and Elizabeth Warren. He's not even trying to appear fair. And it's no wonder that from the very beginning, this investigation centered around one man, one man only, and that's your president, Donald Trump. It's the opposite of how our justice system is supposed to work, which brings us to part two of our witch hunt analysis. Remember in the old Soviet Union, they investigated people and then they found crimes. In America, we're supposed to investigate crimes and find the perpetrators. And sadly, here we are investigating a man, not a crime. Look at Michael Flynn. Look at Papadopoulos. Look at Manafort, Stone, Jerome Corsi. They share only one thing in common, connections to Donald Trump. Flynn Papadopoulos pled guilty to process crimes caused by the investigation itself. And in the case of Flynn, the FBI didn't even think he was lying, but he ran out of money, had to sell his house. And I'm pretty certain that his son was threatened to be investigated if he didn't sign the papers. And for example, Manafort's crimes, nothing to do with Russia, nothing to do with collusion. You have issues that were previously resolved that date back to 2007, loan applications and taxes. And no matter what Mueller throws at these men, it doesn't matter, hours of interrogations, threats, life in prison, well, he's always offering the get out of jail free card if they say what Mueller and his team want them to say. By the way, with no evidence whatsoever needed of any Trump-Russia collusion, nothing has been uncovered, zero. Even CNN's fake news, fake Jake Tapper admitted there's literally no crime here. You know why? Because there isn't. Take a look. Thank so this you. is, look, this is clearly not welcome news for the president. I don't want to pretend that it is. But once again, I look at these documents and I don't see any evidence of conspiracy between members of the Trump team and members of the Russian government to interfere in the election. No conspiracy, no collusion, no crime. What we have, though, is a political persecution. By the way, this started way before Mueller. Now, breaking tonight, The Hill's John Solomon is reporting, during the presidential election, Donald Trump's allies were constantly targeted by our own intelligence apparatus. At least six people he's reporting tonight with long-established ties to the FBI or U.S. Western intelligence agencies made entrees to key figures in the Trump business organization or his presidential campaign. This all happening between March 
and October 2016 in the lead up to the election. And Solomon continues, nearly all of the contacts involve the same overture, a discussion about possible dirt, stolen emails, harmful to Hillary Clinton, or unsolicited business in London or Moscow. And get this, according to the report, these contacts were likely efforts by Obama's DOJ. Why? To bolster claims made in Hillary Clinton's bought and paid for phony lies dossier, the lying dossier put together by Christopher Steele. He doesn't even stand by his own dossier. He can't corroborate anything in it or verify anything in it. With, this is huge news because they're plotting, planning, and scheming. And it brings us to the third issue in our analysis, the disgusting, despicable two-tiered system of justice. That shouldn't be in the United States of America because in 2016, the Clinton campaign, they funneled millions and millions of dollars through a law firm, Perkins Coie in order to hire an op research firm, in order to hire an ex-foreign spy that had deep Russia connections to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. That spy, Christopher Steele, puts together wholly uncorroborated, unverified dossier full of Russian lies, probably straight from the Kremlin. And instead of investigating the obvious collusion, Obama's DOJ, Comey's FBI, they used that dirty campaign op research. They never verified. They never corroborated as the very basis to open investigation into Donald Trump. And by the way, get deep into the Trump campaign by committing fraud multiple times on the FISA court to get warrants against the Trump campaign associate. That's Carter Page. They used it in a coordinated leak strategy, and they actually talk about it. Why would they have a leak strategy? To manipulate the American voters. And today, it's the foundation of what is Robert Mueller's witch hunt. This gross, despicable, double standard, it doesn't end there. Remember Uranium One. Let's talk about this. Do we really care about Russian interference in America? Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, one of nine people, including Eric Holder, signing off on sending 20% of our uranium, which is the foundational material for nuclear weapons, to the hostile regime of Russia, the hostile actor Vladimir Putin. In 2015, the New York Times report, reported, quote, shortly after the Russians announced their intention to acquire a majority stake in Uranium One, well, former President Bill Clinton received $500,000 in Moscow for a speech from a Russian investment bank. Yep, the same bank with links to the Kremlin that was promoting Uranium One stock. And it gets even more sketchy. During the transfer of Uranium One to Russia, the Clinton Foundation, they received millions and millions of dollars from the very people involved in the deal. And by the way, in the lead up to this, the FBI director at the time was Robert Mueller. Well, we had an FBI informant inside of Putin's network right here in America. And he was telling the FBI about what he was witnessing. Serious, serious issues. Here's what he told me when I had an opportunity to talk to this informant. And at some point you became aware that Russia wanted to get a foothold in the uranium industry and that they were going to look at this, this conglomeration known what we now know as Uranium One and that deal was going to give them that foothold if in fact it was approved by nine government agencies. Yes, sir, there was no question about it. Yeah, and the FBI knew that? The Bureau knew it. Uh, the Uranium One position was a part of a long-term strategy, a four-tier strategy by the Russians. Were they telling you that they had confidence that Clinton would sign off on this deal? Absolute confidence. Did they have confidence that Obama would sign off on this deal? They were quite sure that Obama and the administration who they had deemed and, and labeled as being very weak multiple times would respond favorably. So before they approved it, that informant described issues involving bribery, extortion, kickbacks, money laundering, Putin's network inside America to get a foothold in our uranium industry, the foundational material for nuclear weapons. By the way, Bob Mueller happened to be the FBI director at the time. He was the one being informed. Why would they ever approve any such deal like that? So is Robert Mueller's merry band of Democratic donors, are they investigating that CD link between the Clintons and Russia? And by the way, of course not. 
What about Mueller? He was the FBI director. That was his guy that had infiltrated Putin's network in the United States. Maybe he could be investigated. It has to do with Russia, nuclear materials. Why did they ever let that happen? That's because we now live in a two-tier justice system, one where President Trump and anybody around him are aggressively pursued for months on end by a team of Democrats masquerading as investigators. The Clintons, any other Democrat, they get away scot-free. Every American should be very concerned and worried by what is a completely unfair precedent in this country. And sadly, most of the mainstream media, they are so left-wing in their partisanship, so filled with anti-Trump rage every second minute, hour of every day, that they're literally cheering Mueller every single move he makes with giddy anticipation and excitement, trembling with joy and happiness, sort of like Chris Matthews getting a thrill up his leg watching Obama. Every time they hear the word Russia, 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 even if Mueller's just indicting, oh, intelligence officials from Russia that will never be brought to the U.S. to be put on trial, ever. It's just to mention the name. Watch this. This guilty plea yesterday was really an early Christmas present for all of the congressional committees that are investigating various elements of the, of the Russia case here. I, I still am of the mind that this president may not serve out his term. From our reporting, one thing is clear. He has been knocked off balance here completely. The question becomes, when do Republicans start to turn on Trump? Because that's the only thing that's going to get Trump out of office. And if this were a mafia investigation, Trump would be indicted under RICO. No question about it. I spoke with a source who is very close to Michael Cohn, who said to me today, uh, in no uncertain terms, Michael has the goods. He has extremely valuable information. You have... Uh as somebody who's in Trump's innermost circle for so long, Chris, who's known as his fixer, who knows where the bodies is, are buried. This is not the way a high elected official is supposed to talk. It's the way guys talk to me when they're wearing orange jumpsuits and explaining why they got done wrong. NPR also today trying to link Donald Trump Jr. to the Cone revelations from yesterday, all but calling him a liar. But yeah, hours later, NPR, NPR was forced to backtrack in an editor's note writing they mischaracterized Don Jr.'s statement. These people are not looking out for you, the American people. They're looking ahead to the 2020 election. They're rooting for the president to be de delegitimized, to fail, no matter the consequences, no matter the upset. To, to the entire country, not helping the American people in any way.